we'll go through some products that we have. I'll just kind of give you the quick rundown. I did make all of these for us to use. Has anyone looked at them? They're pretty ridiculously dense. Um, just so that you guys know, I should have put a key on here, but basically um, when there's a T on these columns, so for example, it says whey-free, gluten-free, that kind of stuff. If it has a T, that means trace. So like when you look at the label and it says it was packaged in a facility that has like tree nuts or whatever, it's going to have a T on there, but it's not necessarily in that product. Okay? Um, so I can pass these around so you can look at them. They're on the front and back for the product. So if someone comes in and says, hey, I'm vegan, what can I have of your granola bars? There's a couple on here, so you can help them. Where are we keeping those on the floor? Um, I think we're going to have them at the cash wrap. Or we're going to hang them right on the nutrition yeah. thing with a shoelace. <coughs> yep. And I have Put some of these extra them. printed out if you guys want to like take them home. And I can, I'll just email them to everybody. Yeah. I'll forward you guys all this stuff in email format. There is a copy of everything at the cash wrap, though. Cool. Yeah. So basically, um, goose, obviously, they're easy. Um, they're typically 90 to 120 calories, uh, 20 to 27 grams of carb. One thing to always look for and make sure your customers know is that if it has peanut butter or chocolate, what is going to be higher or what is going to be in the product that's other than carbohydrate? There's going to be fat, no matter what the product is, if it has peanut butter or chocolate. So if you have someone with a very sensitive GI system that's coming in and wants a peanut butter goo, be very careful of recommending that, okay? Because it will potentially upset their stomach more than one of the plain or, you know, more plain flavors. Um, other things, make sure to watch for is caffeine. It says it's super tiny on there. Um, and the thing with caffeine, I'll talk about later. Um, whey is a big thing. Who knows what whey means as far as allergies? It's a bad habit of dairy. Yeah, so that means if anyone's lactose intolerant or has any kind of milk issues, whey is not going to work for them. Okay. Gluten is going to be in some of the goose, so be careful. Also, some shellfish, those kinds of things. What is shellfish in for those of us who are allergic to it? Just, it's, um, on, it's actually part of yeah, what you're Yeah, it's on about. there. I can't remember exactly That's fine. which ones. Um, any questions about goos? Um, for gummies, so anything like a shot block or any kind of um, jelly bean, they're about 100 to 200 calories per package I'm talking about. The thing with our gummies is that there's often two servings in a package. Customers typically do not see that. It's extremely, extremely important to point that out to them. Um, they're anywhere from 24 to 48 grams of carb. So like for example, a whole thing of shot blocks would be good in theory for an hour of someone if that's all they're doing, if they're just drinking water and having shot blocks, an hour of exercise. It's a lot. Um, the things with gummies also is that they typically have no fat because they are pretty much just sugar. There's no chocolate gummies right now that are out. <laughs> um, and they don't have any of the allergens typically. So there's no whey in them. There's not going to be gluten in them for most of them. They'll also have a lot of the B and C vitamins. So just be aware. Um, there are a couple, as I'm sure you know, of gummies that have caffeine and one in particular that's more of an electrolyte based. So, beware. Yeah. Just um, out of curiosity, goo versus gummies. I mean, I know a lot of it personal preference. Like some people just don't like goo. Right. Um, but as far as performance, one better than the other. Not really. Goo might hit your system just a little bit faster because it's a liquid form versus chewing and digesting. Um, but I can't tell you it's going to be five or ten minutes faster or how much of a difference it would make um, if. Yeah, and I, I don't, yeah, it's personal preference, I think, for the most part, unless anyone has anyone, any other comments on that. Okay, um, so the powders and tabs that we have, so there's different reasons we have powders and tabs, right? We have refueling things, so for replacement after exercise, and then we have rehydration tabs and stuff like that. So um, the main difference is going to be our refuel 
like um, Endurox or anything like that is going to have protein and it's going to have potentially some fat. Whereas most of the rehydration stuff does not have any carb or protein and it has tons, or not tons, but it has our electrolytes in there. Um, so with our refueling stuff, make sure it's going to have whey in it 90% of the time. So if you're lactose intolerant, do not recommend that. Um, and then traces of nuts, caffeine sometimes. There's some soy in there too. Our rehydration, again, watch our portion size. Some of them are half a tab. Who puts half a tab in their water? Do you know of anyone that breaks it in half? Yeah, so make sure that customers see that. Um, they have anywhere from 160 to 640 milligrams of sodium and 50 to 100 milligrams of potassium. Those are our two main electrolytes that we look for in replacement for exercise. That's what we lose in sweat, typically, those two. There's more electrolytes, but those are the ones that we want to watch for. Um, and I'll talk about what that means in like real food in a second, too. And then we have our waffles. Um, all of the waffles have fat in them, so just be aware. And they all have um, whey, or most of them have whey, and all of them have gluten. So if someone's trying to stay away from gluten, watch out. Um, our granola bars vary, so um, Cliff, Pro, all those kinds of things. A lot of them really encourage that they can be almost a meal. A 400 calorie granola bar is pretty darn close to a meal. Typically when someone asks me, well, what's a snack? My rule of thumb is 200 calories or less. So unless you're really trying to get those calories in or you're using it as a meal replacement, it's not necessarily a snack. Um, and quite a few of them, especially the chocolate, or the peanut butter chocolate, or those kinds of flavors, they have a ton of fat in them. So they're, while they're a grill bar, or organic, or whatever else they are, pretty darn close to hamburger. So keep that in mind. Um, a couple other things, make sure you watch for caffeine. I think it's the Cool Mint and the Toffee Cliff Bars, both have caffeine in them. So just be aware. Um, most of them have nuts in them, so if you have someone with a nut allergy, 90% of the granola bars are not going to work on them. Okay. Any questions about our products that we have? Thank you for making those yeah. lists. That's awesome. Yeah, I'm crazy, awesome. but awesome. That's really cool. Yeah. Super cool. Um, okay, so we'll go through just kind of thinking outside the box of what our products offer versus a typical food. So a lot of people say, oh my god, that has caffeine in it, I can't have it. Caffeine has not shown to have any poor effects to exercise. It actually really does help with exercise and exercise benefits. Um, a lot of research showed previously that it was a, um, something that would cause dehydration. It does not as much now. Yes, alcohol does. Caffeine does not. <laughs> So, um, you know, if that comes up, you know, ensure, you know, remind the customer that it's not going to make that much of a difference as far as hydrating during training. Is the research showing that the caffeine don't take it at a certain time compared to, I read something that it had to be within a window of your exercise or it didn't turn into a diuretic? Like if you drank coffee two hours prior to right. exercising, it was a diuretic, where if you drank it 30 minutes or an hour, your body was still in the process, so it actually right. helped with the exercise and stuff on it. I don't know 100% that answer. I can get you more information on it, but I do know in general they're not looking at, as it, at it as a diuretic as much anymore. So the uh, diuretic effect they thought caffeine has is very minimal, is my understanding. Yes? Yeah. See, what um, I've been led to believe caffeine does is it since you're dilating your blood vessels, it's going to deliver the nutrition faster to you than a product without caffeine. Is that accurate or inaccurate? I wouldn't say it's hugely accurate, but I'd have to double check on that. I don't know. Our body's pretty darn fast in metabolizing things, especially straight sugar. I don't know other than maybe a few seconds how much faster it can be. But I can check on that. When we first had a, a goo brought in, that's the main reason they put caffeine in it, because there was such a small amount of caffeine, but they'd say that that was the goal, was to get it to your system more quickly, so you would, right. you know, you'd stabilize more quickly from a standpoint of, of 
bonking or, yeah. or not. So I'll have to just just it. saying that a yeah. lot of people believe that because that's what was always published <laughs> for yeah. a long, long time. Well, and one thing I guess this brings up something that I think everyone should know. Um, I've had a few questions about this, and Brian and I have talked about this. A lot of people in Safari are taking glucose taps. Are taking glucose taps. Who knows what a glucose tap is? Anybody? So basically, it looks like a tum. It is a product that we have at Safari for people with diabetes. Okay? There's four grams of carbohydrate per tum size tab. So in order to get the same effect as you would from a goo, from glucose tabs, you'd have to eat five of them. People are going and they're eating one glucose tab because they think it's going to help. Four grams of carbohydrate is not going to help. Glucose tabs are there for an emergency for someone who needs to know exactly how many carbs they need and can control in a small amount if they have diabetes. Goos are made for a reason. We need to encourage people to use goo not our glucose tabs. So, a, a diabetic embarking on a massive exercise adventure such as training for a marathon really should be seeing their own dietitian or doctor recommend these up because we're not skilled to offer them that. No. Yeah. Um, so sorry, that was a side note. Right. Um, right. But as far as caffeine and products, Typically, they have anywhere from 25 to 55 milligrams of caffeine. Coffee, eight ounces of coffee has 100 to 150 milligrams of caffeine. So it's a minimal amount. But if it's someone who does not have caffeine in their system at all, it's going to make a difference. Same thing with Red Bull, just if anyone wanted to know, 80 milligrams. So coffee is still going to be our biggest bang for caffeine. Sodium. So uh, our products, the most sodium that they have in one serving is 640 milligrams of sodium. A teaspoon of salt has over 2,000 milligrams of sodium. Okay, so keep that in mind. The things that we have and we offer for rehydration really don't have all that much as far as electrolytes. They're good to use. <laughs> small quantities so you can get used to it learn what you need as far as when you're running but a teaspoon of salt is going to blow you out of the water mm -hmm. um, pretzels we get, we get questions about that sometimes at safari especially when it's really hot out mm -hmm. you know, do people need to be taking in extra salt when, you know if they're out there at 85 degrees or something yeah so typically we look at the day before also mm -hmm. adding some salt the day before is going to help um, like french fries you know, something like that, that's going to help the day before. Um, we want to get sodium and potassium. If it's hot and they sweat a lot, yes, they're going to want to get more on a hot day. But more than what goo would offer or whatever, but I mean... More than a salt tablet would offer? ton. Should we have salt tablets it, at the... No, I don't think we kit. need it at the first aid kits. I think people need to be aware of their bodies and know what they do. So I haven't said this yet, but the very, very most important thing that someone can do if they're training and they want to train hard and run fast and be at their peak is to keep a journal. And keep a journal of what they're eating, what they're exercising, if the exercise was awesome, terrible, whatever it was, and realize their patterns. Okay, well, you know, I only had two goos this day and I totally hit the wall. I clearly need to have three the next time I run, whatever. Same thing with electrolyte replacement. You need to pay attention to that, you need to pay attention to the temperature, and then know your body and say, okay, it's hotter, I'm going to need a little bit more. It's very individual. Does that help? So our, <clears throat> ever since I was in high school, our, our coach in high school used to say every night you need to eat a handful of chips or pretzels. And at that age, you're with the fat and whatever you're made of, it doesn't make a difference when you're in high school as much. But he'd say it every night, and we're, nobody ever really knew why, and this is why. Because most of us don't have enough salt if we're doing this high-intensity stuff. You know, I mean, obviously, if you're eating frozen dinners all the time, like Cass over there, who it's all salt because it has to be saved forever. He's probably okay. <clears throat> yeah, he's probably fine. But most people aren't, aren't putting salt on everything. And so it's, a, it's an easy, just tell everybody should be doing that. We should be doing, saying that every time somebody says, I feel like crap. Cool, you need more salt, more potassium. <laughs> 
You need to eat more during a run. If we said that to every runner, then we'd be right on target. Not like in one hit. The salt thing you can do literally in one hit. You can do a bag, one of those mini bags filled of pretzels before you go to bed. Drink a right. bunch of water, go to bed, wake up the next day and have a much better run. Yeah. I think many of our runners think <coughs> the days before type stuff, they're going to drink water all day long, where they're actually washing their soda wrong. Right. Right. And now they tell you I felt like crap, but I really hydrated well yesterday. I actually ran a race with the guy and I said, well, how'd you hydrate? Well, I drank water all day yesterday. Kind of I had mile nine of a half marathon and he was down and he was... So other than salt and what I at or let or I have for you guys on this handout, what are our biggest sources of sodium <coughs> typically in an American diet? Packaged foods. Yeah. Anything that's a packaged food, anything that is a processed food is gonna have sodium. Yeah. Um, basically the only things that don't have sodium in our diet are gonna be things like fruit and fresh vegetables. Cheese has a ton of sodium in it. Soup is a big one that people don't realize how much sodium is in soup. I mean, just a little cup of soup would be fine, too. So just remind people how much sodium is in food, but yet we still need more before we it. We've got people inspiring or experimenting with real food instead of food and stuff on the run. It's kind of interesting to see. I have no idea how that's going to work out. But I see little squares of peanut butter sandwiches, I see bags of pretzels, I see fig newtons. Yeah. One of my customers the other day told me they switched to dried fruit. Yep. Yeah. Raisins, raisins, those kinds of things, definitely. There's no reason not to. I mean, yes, it's not good for us as far as a selling standpoint, but they do just as well. And especially for someone who wants to do more of like the whole food kind of thing, there's no reason not to. Um, as far as potassium, the number one source of potassium is orange juice. Eight ounces of orange juice will give you the most potassium compared to any other normal size of the product. So most people say, oh, we'll eat a banana. Drink some orange juice. That will do you just as good, if not better, because it has a thousand more milligrams of potassium. So eat three bananas or eight ounces of orange juice. <laughs> So again, a lot of people stay away from juice. Juice is a very, very good tool for runners. It's a very good thing to have. Another nice thing is chocolate milkshakes have a ton of potassium in them too. So who doesn't like chocolate milkshake? It's a good thing to have maybe the day before as well. Can we have one every day? Depends. Are you looking to eat more? I'm now bodybuilding as of today. <laughs> Any questions about like real food and what's in real food? Our other electrolytes that we have, so we have sodium and potassium, calcium, magnesium, and phosphorus are going to be our main ones. Magnesium is in a lot of foods, a lot more in like vegetables and natural foods. Um, who knows what is going to get phosphorus, what has phosphorus in it? This is the hard one. Asparagus. Sarah should know. Sarah does not know. Kale. Kale has everything. <laughs> Kale is the superfood. It's, um, milk is going to be one of our highest sources of phosphorus. So um, milk, yogurt, cheese is all going to have phosphorus in it. So that's kind of a nice and easy thing. The other thing that most people don't think about that Rob is very familiar with because this makes Mountain Dew good. <gasps> Orange juice concentrate. No. Oh, but it's in there. Dark soda has phosphorus in it. So any dark colored soda. <laughs> no, he's not dark. He's not dark. He's not dark. But he's not, not, not dark. So he doesn't have phosphorus. Right. What phosphorus does is it actually binds with calcium and it can break down your bone. Yeah. Nice but does that also oh. say bad effects of soda? No. <laughs> but if we're trying to be really um, positive about things, that's one thing we can be so positive about. So is better than coke. Yeah. Yes, that's what we're trying to talk about. <laughs> Mountain Dew is better than Coke. They did yes, a whole thing though on bones. high school on You can't put your teeth in Mountain Dew. It will dissolve. It will dissolve. Yeah. Yeah. So any of those dark colored sodas. That's a, something that most people don't know clearly. But anyway. Um, okay, we'll just go through the rest of these really quickly. So again, sneaky things to look for with our products is our caffeine. Our chocolate and peanut butter are going to be higher than fat. Whey is going to be a milk source. Glucose syrup 
and maltodextrin are mostly what make up our products. Glucose syrup is going to be a little bit faster of an acting carbohydrate. Barely a difference, but just so that you know, there, there's a couple different things that we put as far as sugar into products. Um, anyone know what sorbitolics or sugar alcohol? Does anyone ever xylitol, xylitol, any of those? So sugar alcohol is different than like a Splenda or anything like that. What a sugar alcohol is, is it's typically in those diabetic products. Okay, so like those sugar free candies and things like that. Anyone ever tried those? No. Eaten a few of them? Because you will run to the restroom <laughs> immediately. So if someone is saying, yeah, I have, you know, three sugar free hard candies before I run and I can't understand why I keep going to the bathroom, that's going to be why. And people think they're doing something good for themselves because they're having a sugar free something. Not going to be ideal, and it's really going to upset yeah. your stomach. And some products will put sorbitol in them. Sugar-free fat foods. Yeah. So for runners, in general, I mean, sugars are crap, right? Right. But a lot of people are crap. Like the brand. Bring it up. Really? No more diet. <laughs> Pop. I mean, you see, you've seen a lot of people using more whole foods, like cherries and stuff like that. But is anybody using dates? Like they really should, you know, mixing them. In. I mean, I definitely preach using a date. Yeah. With the high glucose that it has. And yeah, watermelon would be a good one too. I mean, it's not really portable, but watermelon is very high in sugar as far as our fruits. Um, the only thing is if someone's having issues with like GI symptoms and going to the bathroom, yeah. fruits while running, they're not going to help. That's the only thing. Okay. Yes. Do orange slices like have? <clears throat> High potassium too, because I'm seeing the orange juice. So yeah. I've been known yeah. to take orange slices as a black bag kind of thing. Um, so I already talked about electrolytes. Um, so obviously, just a few tips and tricks. They're all going to be pretty common sense to all of us. Practice during training runs. Make sure everyone we work with is not doing something new on race day. Mm -hmm. <laughs> They're not. They're not going to go and wear a new pair of shoes on race day. They're not going to go try a new boot on race day. Keeping a food diary is going to be extremely helpful, um, along with exercise. And the thing with food diaries is making sure that people record like portion size, what time, when they exercise, what they did. I mean, it's super, the more detail, the better it's going to be. Um, avoiding fiber and high fat anywhere <coughs> to 24 hours before a race, especially if you have a lot of GI symptoms with running. So fiber and fat are two things that we want to watch. Um, one thing I like to work on with people is making fuel and hydration goals. So every 10 minutes I'm going to have a sip of water or every mile I'm going to do this. So really making measurable, easy goals. So um, you don't sit down at you know, a water stop and drink three cups of water because then it's going to be sloshing around and doing this for most people. Some people are better than others. Some people have stomachs of steel. Um, but you know, really trying to advise on taking sips as you go. Same thing with food. Um, some of the things that we really want people to watch for are nausea, dizziness, and shortness of breath. Shortness of breath being the very most important thing. If you are short of breath, please stop. <laughs> Clearly, don't push yourself any further. But those are really big symptoms of dehydration. So be very careful. Dehydration is common. It shouldn't be as common anymore as it's getting cooler out. But make sure people are aware of that. <coughs> And then, rule of thumb across the board, watch your portion size. Watch the serving size versus the portion size. They're not always the same thing. Half a can of soup is typically not a portion size, but that's a serving size. So really, really make sure that people are paying attention to that. So where do you find out a portion size? Well, what do you put on your plate? That's your portion size. So your serving size is going to be what's on the label. So like, for example, cereal is an easy one. Mm -hmm. Like Cheerios, it's like three quarters of a cup. Who eats three quarters of a cup of Cheerios? I mean, Six times. <laughs> typically my fist yeah. is going to be a cup. Yeah. So from here up is going to be a cup. Joe's got a bigger fist, so this doesn't really count. Joe's got four hands. Um, but just, so you have kind of an idea, and I can give you more tools of that, like if your thumb is going to be about a tablespoon, um, your palm is going to be about three ounces, a little bit more, depending. 
So really watching what you do versus your um, 